Hello everyone and welcome to the sideline, the place where you get all the highlights for your favorite South Florida teams. My name is Kenneth Bueno and while unfortunately Alfredo Banegas, my co-anchor, is not here, both the Panthers and the Heat have officially started their championship finals run and we just couldn't miss it. So with that, the sideline starts now. <laughs> It was a rocky start for the Miami Heat who were on the road for game one of the NBA Finals versus the Denver Nuggets. Reporter Aquiles Pareto was at the ball arena with insight on the atmosphere prior to tip-off. Heat and five, right? Yeah. Heat and five, baby. Heat and five. The Miami Heat and the Denver Nuggets hoping to secure the win and gain an early lead in the matchup. Outside of the ball arena, among a sea of blue and gold, Heat fans stood out with burning hope. They outsize us in every position, but I feel like we can do Heat in seven. We just have that kind of grind to us this year. And so I'm excited to be here, excited to see them win. But as the game started, some of the hope flickered away. By halftime, the Nuggets had a dominant 59-42 lead, while the Heat struggled to connect from behind the arc. Nuggets star player Nikola Jokic, a standout. Jokic, the bully ball, but we're going to shut him down. Bam Adebayo is going to take his lunch money tonight, baby. Unfortunately, the Heat did not finish on top this game. However, fans are hopeful the team still has a chance. We just got to win one of two, and then we bring it back to Miami. A stronger second half could not save the Heat. The final score of 104-93 leaves the Nuggets with a 1-0 lead heading into game two on Sunday. After the game, Heat coach Eric Spolstra spoke about his strategy moving forward. It's going to require more. Um, we'll get to work and um, you know see what we can do better, um, what we can do harder, what we can do with more effort, what we can do with more focus. In Denver, I'm Aquiles Barreto reporting for Kaplan News. Out in Ball Arena, the Miami Heat found a way to split the series 1-1 after a nail-biting Game 2 of the NBA Finals versus the Nuggets in Denver. Miami ran out to a double-digit lead early, but the Nuggets responded with a double-digit lead of their own by the second quarter. 41 points out of two-time league MVP Nikola Jokic was not enough, however, as five of Miami's players scored in double figures. Denver made the game tough through the waning minutes, but the Heat held the fort down to tie the series up. The final score was Heat 111, Nuggets 1 wait the NBA Finals turns to Miami in the Kaseya Center for Game 3 Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. While fans in Denver were silenced after Miami Heat's Game 2 win at the Ball Arena, on the other side of the country, fans in Miami at the Kaseya Center were going absolutely insane. To touch more on the atmosphere, we'll bring in our very own Esteban Big Guapo Rodriguez from War. Esteban, first of all, welcome. Hey, good. What's good, <laughs> brother? I'm happy to be here. Listen, I want to I wanna tell everyone right now, I am no basketball expert. But I do know a good party when I see one. And for $10 at the Kaseya Center, best believe I just had to be there. And talk more about that atmosphere because while it was a road game in Denver, the Heat fans were there like if it was just any other home game, right, in the NBA Finals. What was that like? Nah, for real. You would have believed it was a game. The only thing missing were the actual players. I mean, they had the performances, the dancers. They had the flamethrowers. Bernie was there making a, a whole commotion in the stands. And... Everyone was still on Cuban time because like by the time I get uh, walked in when the game was about to start only half the arena was filled and surely uh, slowly but surely throughout the half the NPCs were starting to fill in. Yeah, that was typical Cuban behavior for them to all show up late. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of 2013 when they all were leaving the arena when they thought uh, the Heat had lost the finals versus the Spurs and then all banging the doors trying to get back in when Ray Allen hit that game tying three. But talk about the game itself. I mean, the way the fans reacted because you had that perspective, right? From oh, Kaseya yeah. Center. Yeah, like, okay, so we had an early lead, all right, 10 plus maybe, uh, and the fans were just absolutely ecstatic. They were like, everyone saying, oh, the Denver Nuggets are going to sweep the Miami Heat. There's no chance, like, there's an eighth seed, like, they're, they're, they're frauds and this and that. But, you know, with that early 10 lead, everyone was hyped. Everyone was like... <laughs> But then we lost that 10 lead, bro, and then everyone just... And it didn't look much better after that. I mean, you know, uh, I know my, my buddy of mine was like, hey, it's almost halftime. If we're down 15, I'm out of here. I don't need to do this to myself. And for a minute, it looked like that. I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna have a ride home because he was the one that brought me. And ain't no way I was gonna leave at halftime. 
Yeah, and, and there's nothing like being a Heat fan, being from the emotions of absolute tragedy and abysmalness to just absolute hype, feeling like we're the most unstoppable yeah. team. It's it's insane. We went through like all seven stages of, of <laughs> depression, all right? We, we almost accepted failure. And just to see players like Duncan Robinson absolutely ball out, even though we got 10 points, there were like 10 magical points because after Duncan Robinson's performance, the whole team's energy just shifted to, to that Jimmy Butler mentality like, all right, who cares what anyone says? Who cares what the score is? Who cares what God might even have for us? <laughs> we are going back. We're getting back in this series. We're getting back in this game, and we're not getting swept. And all 10 of those points from Duncan Robinson all came in the fourth quarter. So at the right time, when he's mean mugging people, you know there's a problem <laughs> if you're the Denver Nuggets. But I would not say that is a, that is a level of disrespect <laughs> that I don't think the Denver Nuggets could handle. Yeah, no, absolutely insane. Nikola Jokic, 41 points. Still somehow not enough to topple Miami. Game three at Kaseya Center is Wednesday at 8.30. Esteban, we certainly appreciate the Thank time as always. Glad me. to have you back on the desk as always. And we'll toss it back. Heat in a very good spot. Tied 1-1, heading to Miami. Let's go, The Panthers played their first Stanley Cup Finals game in 27 years, which means there's a whole generation that has never gotten experience the championship cats, including myself. Our own Tanya Jimenez was at the watch party in FLA Live Arena with more on the story. For the first time since 1996, the Florida Panthers are in the Stanley Cup Finals. Game one is tonight in Vegas, but South Florida showed up to support the cats at FLA Live Arena. It has been 27 years since the last Finals Cup appearance, and the new generation of Panthers fans could not be more excited and ready to experience it for the first time. Were you around for the 1996 um, Stanley Cup Finals? I was not born. You were not born? <laughs> no. <laughs> and what about you? I was not born at all either. <laughs> No, born 1997, so when you're off. Fans flooded the FLA Live Arena, eager to feel the Game 1 jitters, even if just on a screen. So I uh, moved here after college, and I'm from Iowa. They don't have a hockey team. So my friend that I graduated with right here, she uh, worked for the Panthers and uh, made me a fan right away. A win, obviously, is why I came here. Um, score prediction, I would say maybe 2-0. Got a good defense. Hopefully they're going to put out. Shout out, Bob. The Vegas Golden Knights took game one, beating the Cats 5-2. But the arena still shook with the never-ending cheers from fans and electric energy. Wearing black to celebrate the occasion, keeping their fans on their toes, they're called the cardiac cats for a reason. Picking apart the Florida defense, the Vegas Knights scored seven goals, making this the worst game in the playoffs this year for the Panthers. 14 seconds into the third, Anton Lindell puts the Cats on the board, hoping to turn the tide. All-star Panther Matthew Kachuk scored once, but racked up 22 minutes of penalty time. Vegas captain Eichel was sent to the locker room after a massive hit by Kachuk. Two goals, no matter how nice, were just not enough. The Panthers will come home to South Florida, host the Knights for Game 3 this Thursday with defending home ice as top priority. That's all the time we have for today. My name is Kenneth Bueno. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the sideline.